Hello, my name is Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. And August is the month of readathons. I don't know what happened on BookTube, but all of a sudden, every single person that I follow and enjoy on BookTube is now doing a readathon, and it is impossible for me to do all of them, which makes me very sad. August is going to be an incredibly crazy month for me, as it is, because in August I'm going back to full-time teaching, uh, working at a summer school this summer in August, and then at the end of August is teacher induction training, going back to the beginning of September for teaching. So essentially, my summer is over, my time for reading is going to be very limited, and there are a billion readathons going on. The first readathon that is happening is the beginning of August, and this is Camp Spoopathon, which is held by Spoopy Halls. And this is the second Camp Spoopathon that I have participated in. I believe it's the second one that she's done as well. And essentially, it is a spooky summer camp readathon. In this version of the readathon, we are making our way through a summer camp and going through various obstacles to get to the safety of the main cabin at the campsite. There are four prompts in Camp Spoopathon. I am going to try and complete all of them using one book. So the prompts are to read a ghostly book, to read at night, to read a book that has murder, and to read a book that is thrilling. And I happened to come across at my library a book that I think is going to be perfect for this because it is a summer camp book and it is called Camp So-and-So by Mary McCoy. This is supposed to be a spoof. <laughs> I can't talk. This is supposed to be a spoof on camp horror stories, camp horror movies, books, those kinds of things. So there's going to be a lot of poking fun at it, I think. But essentially, it is this summer camp that draws people in, claiming to be this beautiful place, but it's really a nightmare. And the campers are separated into five different cabins, and in each cabin, there is a trial that they need to overcome in order to survive. There is a murderer, there is supernatural elements, which I'm using for ghostly. I think it's a, I think it's a ghost. It is pretty chunky. It is over 400 pages. I think that that is pretty good for a week's worth of reading and I'm really looking forward to it. So this is going to be the first book I read in August and it will complete all of my prompts for Spoopathon. All of the information is going to be tagged down below in the description box if you would like to participate in Camp Spoopathon as well. Another giant readathon that is taking place in August and one that I have been looking forward to all year is the final component to the Aurelium Academy Magical Readathon hosted by G at Book Roast. And this was the first readathon that I participated on officially as a YouTuber. And this will be the wrap up of almost a full year of working with this character that I've created, going through these prompts, living in this world. Uh, it's very comprehensive, completely beautiful. Uh, I will link the video that I did down below that shows what I've done in the past, as well as all of the information from G's channel if you would like to jump in. It's not absolutely necessary for you to have done everything beforehand. You can just jump in this month and participate that way as well. But for those of us who have been here from the beginning, this is a exciting moment. It is the end of a journey. I have a character who is going to the Academy and they are wanting to become a Feywild cartographer. This is someone who goes out and maps the world of the Fey. And in order to become this, I have to pass several classes. The classes all correspond to prompts and a couple of them will need more than one book to satisfy the prompt, or at least two prompts for that one class. The first class that I'm going to be needing for my specialty is Elemental Studies, which is the study of the element of water. And this is just an action prompt. It's not one that requires reading a book, but it's grab something to drink while you start a book. So it could be tea, it could be water, it could be alcoholic beverage, it can be anything, but you have to sit down with a drink when you start your book in order to fulfill that prompt. I also need an O in Animal Studies, which will be the study of familiars. So this will be reading a book that has an animal companion. And for this, I have chosen 
Lyriel by Garth Nix. This is the sequel to Sabriel, and I have been wanting to read this for a while. It was actually on my May TBR. Didn't get to it because I had kind of a slumpy reading month that month, but I am super excited to pick this up. This has a dog as a companion. He is called the Disreputable Dog, and I have heard nothing but good things about him, so I am looking forward to reading this. I also have been really wanting to finish this series because Sabriel was a book that I read as a kid that I absolutely loved and never realized it was a series, so I'm excited to continue on and see how it goes. Everybody says that this is the best book of the series, so definitely looking forward to this one. This also actually fulfills my next class prompt, which is an O in astronomy, and I need to study Lilive, which is one of the moons that circle the land of Eldia, and I need to read a book with an L in the title, and there are two in this one, so this is going to be a double whammy and do two of the classes that I need to pass to get my degree in Feywild cartography. <laughs> Next, I need an O in alchemy, which is the basics of poisons, and in this one I need to read a book that was on somebody else's worst list, but that I think I might enjoy. So essentially you're picking your poison. And for this one, I chose to pick up To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. This is by the same author who wrote the Aragon series, if you're not familiar with him. He wrote those series when he was like 16. He was like the inspiration of my writing career when I was that age and I loved those books and I've been wanting to read his adult novel for a long time. This is science fiction. I started it a little while ago and then had to return it to the library and didn't get more than a couple chapters in so I'm very excited to finally pick this up. The video of the worst books of 2021 was from the Peruse project on booktube. I will link them down below and the video, but she was saying that this book was disappointing to her. I'm guessing because it is really long and maybe boring and doesn't do all the things that it says it's going to do, but I hope it doesn't. I hope I love it. We'll see. Next, I need a Q in inscription, which means that I need to fulfill two prompts for this class. The first one is Glyph Recollection, which is to read a childhood favorite. For this one, I picked The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is a book that I have loved for as long as I can remember, and there is a Middle Earth themed readathon that I'm partake partaking in this month as well that is uh, encouraging me to just fall back in love with Middle Earth in preparation for the new show that's coming out here in September. The second prompt for inscription is inking techniques, and this is to read a manga. I have so many mangas checked out from the library right now, so I'm just going to do kind of a mood read for this one and pick that one out when I come to it. And then finally, the last class I need to pass to get my Aurelium Academy diploma is an O in demonology, and that is the imp wrangling skill. And for this, I need to read a fantasy. I've read lots of fantasies by this point at the end of the course, so any of those will count for that prompt. It could be The Hobbit, it could be Lyriel. So by the end of the month, I will have completed my magical readathon journey, and I am so excited for it. It feels very much like a, a big accomplishment to have made it through all of the months of readathons and reading and all the preparation it took to get to this point. It feels like I'm actually getting a diploma. <laughs> the next readathon that I will be participating in is, like I said before, the Middle Earth Athon, and I will link all of the contacts down below for this readathon as well. I thought it was amazing when I saw it. And it is basically a readathon that is prepping you, getting you amped up for the new show that's coming out uh, in the beginning of September. And there are different teams that you can be on. There are there's the elves, there's men, there's the hobbits, dwarves, and like the Nazgul, the dark lords. So I picked the hobbit. And the three prompts that I have to fulfill are endorsed by an author you like. I changed it to a booktuber I like because I could not find anything endorsed by an author that I like, which was Big Shoes to Fill, 
The next one is Second Breakfast, Something Edible on the cover, and the third prompt is Discovered Treasure, New to Me Author. And so for this one, I chose one book to fulfill all of those prompts, and that was Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. And this is a, a very small, short read that I have heard very mixed reviews on. Some people love it, some people are bored by it, some people don't understand it or get confused when they read it, and I'm really interested to see where I'm going to fall on this. The most recent review that I read of this book, they were crying by the end of like the first half of the book. So I have high hopes for it, I'm hoping that I will love it, and I uh, will give you an update on that when I do. There are also two other readathons that I am going to be participating in this month, and that will be the Polarthon Readathon that is hosted by Jade at JD Ray Reads. This time there are no prompts, there are no specific books you need to read, which makes it really, really great for a month that is this full of readathons. But what she's doing this time is she is encouraging the people who are participating to donate to a cause that is going to help the polar bears and try and keep them from going extinct because a lot of us, as we know, um, the polar bears are really struggling with the climate change and everything. And that is something that has always been incredibly, incredibly close to my own heart. When I was in middle school, I thought I was going to be an environmentalist when I grew up and I was going to save the polar bears. That was like my mission in life as a sixth grader. So I am so happy to be participating in this readathon and Jade is doing, she's going to donate one dollar for every 100 books that she's read and I'm thinking her 100 pages of a book that she's read and I think I'm going to do that as well. We'll see by the end. I definitely want to donate a little bit. We'll see how much I can swing by the end of the month, but I am so excited to be reading this and I, I will link all of that down below and if you just want to donate to the fund because it's an amazing fund, I'll put that fund link down below as well so you can donate if you desire. And then finally, Steph from Steph Loves is doing a 48-hour readathon that is her final book support group readathon. And that is to continue reading books in series that you have started and never finished. And that is definitely something that I struggle with. I have several options for this prompt. I could technically use Lyriel because that is a sequel that I need to read. So that will, I, I feel like I might read that during that readathon that's happening. And then if I finish that or decide I don't want to read that, I also have the second book in Just One Damned Thing After Another series, which is a, a book about time travel and historians who go back in time to study history and see how things actually happened and things go very wrong every single time. So I have the sequel to that on my Kindle as well that I might pick up if I have time and if I don't want to choose to read Lyriel on that weekend. So I have a lot of readathons happening, but relatively few actual books to fulfill the prompts. I tried I tried as best I could to double up my prompts to be realistic about what I would actually be able to accomplish this month because of the fact that I will be going back to work and won't have as much time to read. So this is my final TBR plus Before the Coffee Gets Cold, plus a manga, as well as possibly another sequel or th final book to read for the final book readathon. But this is my TBR. Not too bad. I feel confident that I can get through one, two, three, four, five, six books in a month, even when I'm busy. So we'll see how it goes. I am not doing my tarot TBR this month, as you can probably tell, because I have so many readathons I'm trying to accomplish. I don't want to add an extra thing on top of that because I didn't feel like it was feasible. So I'm going to take a break from the tarot TBR and resume that in September. There are a few other readathons that are taking place that I wish I could join, but I simply cannot, and that is Mixtapeathon, Sapphicathon. I know there are a couple others. If there are, I'll add little graphics for them so you can see them. And I'll tag them down below because they're definitely worth mentioning, and I'm sad that I can't do everything. But this month you really had to pick and choose. There's so much going on. 
thank you so much for clicking on my video and watching my TBR for August. Let me know down below if there are any books that you particularly enjoyed reading that are on my TBR or what you are reading for the prompts for any of the readathons that are taking place. If you are participating in any specific readathons that I am, if there's any readathons that I missed, <laughs> let me know down below. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I will see you in the next video. Take care.